Hello. Hello. Hi. Man, I'm really far away from Periscope. Okay. So I'm recording and hey everybody. So I kind of thought that lunchtime might be a good time to talk instead of at 8 o'clock in the morning. So yes, we're having a snow day in Tennessee again, but I am in Georgia still and I don't know if you can see out the window or not, but there is no snow here. Hold on. <laughs> no snow, but I'm still taking a snow day. <laughs> so I wrote a blog post earlier today and I wanted to get on and talk about it a little bit because I, I love real estate and you sold four houses since last night and you're enjoying a sushi break. That is awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, so see, real estate is fast. If you can sell four houses since last night at midnight, it is fast. I don't know why people think real estate is so slow and I don't know why people think that you need a hundred thousand dollars to get started in real estate when all you really need is a good sales pitch and some activity because once you get just a smallest bit of activity then it just starts to snowball for, for more snow terms okay so what I was talking about on my blo uh, blog article and I'll, I'll try to post it later tonight is that if you have a house if you live in a house and you have a mortgage on it and you know, let's say you have a medium sized payment on it. People tell me all the time that they want to be real estate investors. They want to, you know, buy houses. They want to retire and be a landlord. They want to do all this great stuff and they're just needing to get started. But when I talk to them, they're like, oh, by the way, we sold grandma's house. I'm like, why? You had a house. Why did you sell it? Why would you sell something that you've already, you know, either paid off so it's free and clear so you're straight cash flowing every month, or even if you've had a house for 10 or 15 years and it doesn't suit you anymore, then why not rent it? It's so easy. In my neighborhood in Tennessee and where we live in Georgia, we cannot get enough good rental houses absolutely if you're selling something then you're a one-hit wonder you're gonna get money on it right now but then what are you gonna do with that money you're gonna redo your house which is not bringing you any money uh, I spoke on a blab yesterday that Robert Kiyosaki says your house is a liability and you know you can list it on the spreadsheet as an asset if you want to but an asset makes you money so unless you have rented out your primary residence, then it's not an asset. It's a liability. If you are the only person responsible for making that payment, it's a liability. And that's, you know, that's not me. That's Robert Kiyosaki. And he has more, you know, real estate investments than I would ever know what to do with. So actually, I know exactly what I would do with them. I would retire off of that income. No problem. Done. But anyway, so if you have a house, if your mom has a house, if your grandma has a house and it's free and clear, I understand that, you know, you throw these dinner parties and you have this realtor friend and they really need to get, you know, 10 listings this month so that they hit their numbers. They don't care if they sell it or not. They need, you know, their broker pushes them to get X amount of listings so that potentially they'll get X amount of sales, right? Well you're at this dinner party and you're talking to your real estate buddy who kind of dabbles in it and they don't, you know, it's not their full-time job. They're not an investor. They have a real job. They do real estate on the side or maybe they sell one or two houses a month, but they're not heavy, heavy, heavy in real estate, real estate, real estate. They convince you to list your house and then, you know, you get excited. Your kids get excited. You go out. You start looking at houses. You're going through every open house on Sunday. And then, you know, suddenly you found a house. You made an offer on it. And the paperwork just goes. And, you know, a month or two later, boom, you're in a new house. You've sold your old house. Awesome. Except your ultimate goal was to become a real estate investor. So if your ultimate goal is to become a real estate investor, don't sell that house. Keep that house 
so that you can start your portfolio. Start with one house. Start with the house that you already own. You already paid all of those origination fees. You already paid down the mortgage. You've already paid down the interest. Don't start fresh on something else in a neighborhood that you don't know. You know, you know this neighborhood. You like your neighbors. You want the neighborhood to grow and succeed. So why don't you start renting your house? You got to start somewhere. You absolutely have to start somewhere. And if you're already in a good neighborhood, you have a three bedroom, two bath house, which is what everybody wants to rent, rent it. And if you don't want to fool with it, cool. You don't lose any closing fees, exactly. You don't have any origination costs. You've already got this house. You've already gone through the worst part of buying a house. You should rent it from now on, just rent it. And I say that because you start renting yours, then when everybody in the neighborhood, instead of selling, and then everybody kind of goes through this, uh, oh, I don't know who's going to move in. What if the neighborhood goes down because of this one house? Well, the neighbors will start calling you. Hey, I know them. They'll take good care of the neighborhood. They'll do this and that and the other. And then you buy another house in that neighborhood. And then you buy another house in that neighborhood. And, you know, you, these are your friends. Maybe you can work an owner financing deal on it so that you don't have to buy it. Uh, you you know, they've got it free and clear. They just want the monthly payments. Owner finance from your neighbors. You don't always have to go out and hunt and find new sellers all the time. Just get a good rhythm going so that everybody knows what you do. Owner financing is absolutely fabulous. Lease options are absolutely fabulous. And it won't take 30 years to build up a real estate portfolio if you're doing owner financing and lease options. Okay, it took me you know, two years to get 12 houses, three apartment complexes, and I think we have like eight or nine acres of just random vacant land around town. I don't know. I'll probably need to count that at some point, but we bought it for little to nothing. We rent it for, you know, a little bit of money. We pay the taxes on it and it's done. Now, I know you're telling me that, yes, you want to be a landlord, but you don't have time right now to manage the property. You are afraid people are going to go in and destroy it and blah, 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 blah. Well, let me tell you that I am 31 years old. I'm just going to tell you that. I'm 31, okay? And my friends have bad credit and good jobs. My friends have student loans and they want to start a family. My friends that I run around with, I preach all this real estate to them all the time and they don't listen to me. So you know what they do? They rent three bedroom, two bath houses in good school districts from good landlords. They are good tenants. They love technology. So they make all of their payments online. They set it up to automatically draft. Um, yes, they're probably annoying. They're probably gonna call you because they don't know how to unclog a toilet. You may have to go over there and unclog the toilet for them or um, have rotor rooter get the, you know, grossness out of the sink for them. Yes, that's true. Um, they're probably really lazy and since they've been living in apartments for so long, they expect the yard to stay mowed. They expect the flowers to be pretty. They don't want to do anything but live there and pay the rent. So I know plenty of landlords who have gone in, bought a house, lived in it for a year or two, depending on your tax strategy, and then turned around and started renting the house. And they rent it for a premium rate because a lot of rental houses are, you know, 30 and 40 years old. They haven't been updated. They haven't done anything to them. They're just, you know, grandma's house. They need new carpet. They need this, that, and the other. And people my age want to rent a house, but not in that kind of renter's mentality where they're going to come in and destroy it, they want to rent a house that's going to be theirs for the next five or ten years until they can clean up their credit. I mean, they're going to be there long term. They don't want to admit it, but they are. They're going to be there long term. And they're going to be fabulous tenants because they're going to love the house. They're going to have, you know, this is going to be the house that they started when they first got married. This is going to be the house that they have, you know, their first kid in, maybe the second kid in, maybe they adopt some kids. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but their kids are going to become friends with the other kids in the neighborhood. And suddenly they've been there all through middle, elementary, middle, and high school. Whoopsie. 
Got a call coming in. Okay, so they've been there. Oh no. I lost my periscope. I had a phone call. Okay, coming back on. I'm so, so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I got a phone call and I went to swipe it to hang up and I don't know what I did, but I am so sorry. Technology, we're back, we're back, we're back. Okay, so I was on a rampage about people my age. They're in their late 20s, early 30s. They're starting families and they need good solid houses. Like I have a friend, she owns an insurance company, y'all. She owns the company, okay? It was her dad's. He's handed it down to her and her husband. They're running it. They make good money, but for whatever reason, they don't want to be homeowners. They don't want to be responsible for calling the plumber when the toilet's clogged up. They don't, you know, maybe he mows the grass in the summer. Maybe they pay somebody to do it. I don't know, but they... They're great people. They just don't want to own a house. And the mentality of people in my generation is renters. They rent. We are renters. We have always had everything kind of taken care of for us. And we don't know how to fix sheetrock. We don't know how to, you know, unclog the sink. We don't want to. We want to play on our phones, pay our rent, and have everything just kind of go without us having to do anything, okay? We don't need to, yeah, we'll just pay somebody to take care of all that. That's fine, okay? But if you have a house, and if it is 30 or 40 years old instead of 5 or 10 years old, that's fine, okay? You paint it, you put fresh carpet in it, and you rent it. You get a premium rental rate because, you know, even people that are my age that do have it together and want to be homeowners, they want to build a house and they need a rental house in between, but they want to bring their kids and their dog. Let them. They'll pay for it. So don't be afraid of being a landlord and don't wait until you need the money to be a landlord. You want to start building your real estate portfolio. <laughs> yeah, renters aren't worried about what's behind the floor or the wall. But they do want it to be pretty when they have their guests over. They do want their kids to live in a good house. They're just happy to have a stress-free stress -free place to live. Exactly. They'll make their payments. People my age are just going to make them automatically. You don't even have to wait on that check to come in the mailbox. It's just automatically in the bank for you. So, um, my last point about people my age. Jeez, what was that? Oh, okay, so after they live here for, you know, five or ten years, if at that point you want to offer them a lease option, maybe since they've already been here, their kids know everybody in the neighborhood, they love this house, maybe that's when you throw in a lease option on them. Maybe they repaired their credit, maybe they didn't. But they've been making you payments for five or ten years, you already kind of have a relationship with them anyway, why not let them put ten or twenty thousand down and owner finance it to them or give them a lease option on it? Start renting the houses that you already own. That, that's what I want to tell you. I read an article earlier this week that said, you know, buy a house and rent it. You rent another house and, you know, you're giving somebody else the money, yes, but for the rent that you're getting off your house, it could pay for your mortgage, so your debt's being paid down on your house, and it's paying for your rental house, okay? Or it's paying for half of your rental house. It, it could pay for, you know, just the utilities and the cable at your rental house. But it's also paying down your debt so that in five or ten years you can go out if you want to do it traditionally and get another mortgage on another rental house. That's how you build a real estate portfolio. Do not wait until you're 60 to start spending your retirement money and buying houses and getting into it then. Start now, today. If you're 25, get into it. If I can do a scope on lease options, yes. Um, 
if you're 25, get into it. If you're 30, get into real estate. If you're 55 and you're thinking about retirement because it's in, you know, five or 10 years, start buying real estate now. Start doing lease options now. Start doing owner financing now. Go out and buy a vacant lot for $1,500 and start renting it now. Okay? Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. So, um, I have... Somebody just asked me about lease options. I love lease options. I put two videos up on YouTube today about lease options, talking about, you know, pros and cons and what's cool and what you say and what you do. But lease options are absolutely fabulous. And a lot of people do not work in lease options. I would say there's a very small minority of investors and realtors in your area, wherever you are, that focuses on lease options. So if you can be that one person, that go-to person for lease options, perfect. You're in, you're out, you have a niche, and you're ready to rock and roll and get to the get to the good side of real estate investing. So um, my YouTube channel, I think it's just youtube.com backslash Whitney Nicely. I know you can go to WhitneyNicely.com and I've got a little link to yesterday's Periscope there, but it'll take you also to my YouTube channel. But if you just tap into the search bar, YouTube and Whitney Nicely, then it'll get you where you need to go. And again, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, well, this one I got hung up on, but I am Whitney Nicely. I am a broker for Whitney Buys Houses. We are in Tennessee and in Georgia. And that's where my lovely accent comes in. And I'm also a real estate auctioneer. So I'm currently looking for million dollar plus lake houses, 100 acre tracks of horse farms, anything. Oh, great. Hey, Nashville. <laughs> um, so I know this will work in Tennessee because I'm in Tennessee and it's fabulous. Well, I'm in Georgia today because it was too cold in Tennessee. But um, okay, so broker and auctioneer. If you need more information, y'all, I was swamped yesterday um, with emails and coaching clients and all sorts of people had really great questions for me yesterday. So my email is info at WhitneyNicely.com. The website is WhitneyNicely.com. I am working on more Periscopes. And uh, yesterday I told you about a meeting that I had with some investors in Atlanta. And so yesterday afternoon, I just, because my mom raised me this way, I sent him a quick little thank you email, said, thanks for you know spending some time with me. I hope we can work together. Short and sweet, straight to the point. And all three of them replied back, at some point last night and said yes we are going to work with you we're trying to figure out now how and what we're going to do but we do plan on working with you so i was really excited last night it was fun uh, so make sure you follow up send those emails if somebody gives you you know their time follow up with them say i really appreciate it let's get together maybe if this doesn't work keep me in mind and then you know every so often if you don't hear from them in a week or a month maybe you drop them another line hey I'm still here um, you know I've told everybody about how great our meeting was what can I do to help you always be helping so um, let me know if you have any questions if you want to do any coaching I am starting group coaching in February and and there's a dog outside so Abby the Labby is going crazy um, group coaching and I only have five spots available for that so if you want some coaching let me know and as soon as those five spots fill up it'll be March before I have group coaching again but we can always do one-on-one -on -one and start one hour a week one-on-one -on -one. all of that is at WhitneyNicely.com and it's another dog walking by that's why she's going so crazy but uh, let's see, do I have anything else? Oh, God has just opened the doors wide open for me this week, and I know that's what it is, and I'm really excited. 2016 is going to be fabulous, so um, that's, that's what I have for you today. Uh, check back with me tomorrow. I will have, hopefully, even better news tomorrow, but I'll also be in Tennessee. We're going to look at lake houses. Uh, i got two on the list right now, and if you know anybody with a lake house on Douglas that they want to sell... Send it to me. We'll be looking today. So, thank you. Appreciate your time. WhitneyNicely.com.